Okay, welcome back. And it's time for us to take a look at what the headlines are saying on some major dailies. We'll be joined by Tunde Kolawali, legal practitioner, to take a look at them critically after we've read them out. So we start with the Punch newspaper this morning. And the Punch newspaper leads with 10th National Assembly. Tinubu's candidates, floor APC rebels, Akbabio leads Senate. Uh, the writers there... Abbas beats Wase Jaji, emerges House Speaker. Yari embraces Akbabio after defeat. National Assembly won't be independent. Presidency handpicked leaders, that's uh, NNPP and LP saying. National Assembly won't be independent. Presidency handpicked leaders. You have the pictures there uh, on the front of the Punch newspaper. All right, so a little bit down, you have the smaller headlines. Fans crashed website as Guinness World Records confirms Hilda Baxi cooking record. Over 25,000 trafficked Nigerian women, girls trapped in Mali. That's according to NAPTIP. Over 25,000 trafficked Nigerian women and girls are trapped in Mali. You find details of that on the Punch newspaper. And then above the masthead, you have governors mourn as 103 die in Kwara boat tragedy. 103 Nigerians die in boat tragedy. Rescues recover over 50 corpses, 50 passengers and children missing. This is a very tragic story. Mm. And then just beside it, you have classified documents. Trump, eight arrested, face 37 counts. That's uh, Donald Trump, former president of the United States of America. That's the much I'll be taking from the front page of the Punch newspaper. We move to the leadership newspaper. And leadership newspaper this morning uh, leads with... As Akwabio Abbas take charge, 10th National Assembly vows to tackle economic security challenges. Uh, that's from uh, leadership. On page 7, you'll see that uh, story. And the writers to that story uh, uh, says it will be Commonwealth above party. Uh, we arrive Senate chamber 4 a.m. to prevent 2015 scenario. <laughs> Tinubu seeks collaboration with lawmakers. Then we have on top there, we have uh, 2023 polls. Tribunal admits additional 188 exhibits from OB. You find that on page six of the leadership. Sokoto Caliphate publishes 3.2 million books by Islamic scholars. Wow. Okay. Uh, marketers move to end NNPCL petrol import monopoly. You'll find that on page one and continued on page 10. Akira Dulu begins medical leave, transmits power to deputy. Student loan, National, National Association of Nigerian Students warns lecturers, others removed from committee. And uh, we also have uh, the story of the um, uh, 103 that died in Kwara, boat mishap, and state government, others mourn. Okay, that's the much from leadership we'll be taking this morning. And from the leadership, we'll move to the Nation newspaper, which leads with Abbas, Akpabio Abbas stepping as Senate President Speaker. The writer there, ex Aquaibum State Governor, defeats Yari by 63, 46 votes. Kaduna Rep triumphs by 353, 3 3 over Wasi and Jaji. Trying there to break down how it went down yesterday at the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. On the masthead, you have financial markets rebound on a mere suspension. Naira firms up. Equities make 1.215 trillion Naira gain. Jonathan visits Tinubu. Details of that is on page two. 103 die, 70 missing in Kwara boat accident, and Akari Dulu on medical leave. Details of that is on page 27 of the Nation newspaper. That's the much I'll be taking 
from the nation. Okay, so we move to nature news. Um, I, I thought that was what you mentioned, <laughs> what the, was nation. Yeah. Uh, the nature news uh, is uh, leading with flights. Air turbulence increasing due to climate change. That's a study. Uh, that's on page three. Other um, headlines are environment, environment offense, woman sentenced to 144 hours of community service. Remember the woman who disposed waste into the gutters mm -hmm. and was arrested by Loma. Obaseki pledges to intensify efforts to conserve forest. Inaugurates forest tree commission. Nigeria accepts World Trade Organization agreement on fisheries subsidies. Uh, Quara boat mishap. Uh, Quara government assures of more rescue missions. Uh, Dawn advocates technological innovation to tackle plastic waste crisis. And NNPC gives directive on outline of new cost. Okay, those are the headlines uh, from uh, Nature News. You can read more if you get the newspaper yourself or go to the internet and find out what is really happening. So that's the much we can take from Nature News this morning. And uh, we do have a guest who will help us make sense of some of these headlines that we have just read out. And he is a legal practitioner here in Lagos State by the name of Tunde Kolawole. Good morning and welcome to the program, Good Tunde. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Okay. It's a very... Um, a very good day uh, to be alive. <laughs> Nigeria has transited into uh, from from a civilian government to yet another civilian government, and it's been happening like that from 1999. The president was inaugurated or sworn in a few days ago. Yesterday was the turn of the National Assembly, and the headlines on the punch punch here. The lead headline is that Tinubu's candidate floor candidates floor APC rebels. Akwabio leads a Senate, and we also know that in the House of Representatives, Abbas uh, is leading the House of Reps. So what's your take on what played out and how these people emerged, and what you look out for uh, in the 10th Assembly because of the leadership that we have had? Well, uh, well, I can say that uh, uh, the Senate, the House of Reps, are supposed to be independent bodies. The President, as well as the Governor of the United is not supposed to be the one. If the President has to impose on them, who is going to be the Speaker or the Senate President? So when I read that thought, I consider it to be very cheeky on the part of uh, Punch to have come up with that kind of uh, reaction. Especially when you and I do remember that when they return to be people who, both at the federal level or at the national level, and in a different state, the executive arm of government have never allowed any of the legislative bodies to come up with an independent candidate, with a speaker, or with a senior president that will lead them independent of uh, the wishes and aspirations of the more common. So the first implication of what we have had now at the National Assembly that we might be having a lot of uh, legislators uh, trust the tendency of this new uh, terms of stewardship that we have. The second one is that uh, when you look at the character of the people who are now going to be the national assembly, and it's not inspiring at all. These are people who we do know very well, who we know the antecedents. My father will know very well, my father will know very well, and all that. So I get the impression that we are never going to be having a very dynamic and robust national assembly. Because these two characters are establishment partners. They never like to rock the boat. In fact, 
If you permit me to say, I will say it looks like uh, the return of Bukania is not the low cost in the National Assembly. What do you mean by the return of Bukania in the National Assembly? We need to understand that. We want to understand other than to say that uh, Papa Joe, for example, has not been a is known uh, and associated with prudence. He is also not somebody who could be said to be an anti corruption corruption procedure. So if the incumbent president has said he wants to fight corruption, it might be difficult for him to carry people like uh, a party and about uh, as long to recollect that uh, as I today said that Mr. Apati has a private jet, a Bombardier private jet. So if a man who was with us there in Lagos, trying to trade as a lawyer, and then ruled for eight years as governor, and then was in the Senate of Minister, and uh, he became a minister, and now cruises around in the private jet, in fact, it said that he has about two, because I recollect one time when he had an accident and they had to be taken abroad, the newspapers in Nigeria reported that Mr. Asadi has been thrown around, as he has been thrown abroad in his favorite uh, private jet, in his favorite Bombardier private jet. If we are saying his favorite Bombardier private jet, that means he has more than two. I am not too sure that the work he has done in public offices is sufficient enough to make him be able to afford and maintain the Bombardier private Okay. I see what you mean now. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm worried. Yeah. So let, let's move away from that story to another, uh, which is on the leadership newspaper. Market has moved to an NNPCL petrol import monopoly. Hello, hello, hello. D did you hear me? Should I repeat? No, no, repeat that again. Okay, market has moved to an NNPCL petrol import monopoly. Monopoly. Marketers. Yeah. yeah. Did you get me? Yes, I've got it. What the essence of the capitalism is uh, to allow all birds to be able to fly in the air. That is to say, you are calling competition. All that NNPC has been doing in the past. It's a monopoly which is antithetical to the tenets of the capitalism. And that monopoly itself, we have not exercised it properly and to the comfort of the average Nigerian person. So, I also remember that NMC has also been privatized. So, if they have been privatized and they are now a business going concern, there is no justification whatsoever to charge them with the responsibility of so many important petroleum products into Nigeria. It uh, has not worked and it will not work. Furthermore, if you say you have regulated the petroleum sector, you can also have a sole business contact importing the fuel. So, uh, if the monopoly is been taken away from them, I think they are proper thing uh, to be done. Furthermore, if anybody who has a resources can bring them into the country, chances are that the prices of petroleum products won't drastically come down. In the sense that uh, people can go anywhere in the world 
whether it's in Saudi Arabia, whether it's in Dubai, whether it's in Jesus and all that, and shop for cheaper fuel, bring it to the country and sell. So that might uh, help uh, bring down the price. And also make it possible for fuel to be available all the time, wherever they are needed. But the challenge that we have uh, in this area is that uh, if the CDA, the Central Bank of Nigeria, is not in the position to make foreign exchange available to all the marketers that might be licensed, in fact, they ought not to be licensed, that are allowed to bring friends to the country, they will be back into square one. Square one, as it was in the era of the sole monopoly or the monopoly of the NNC state. Honestly speaking, the roadmap, an efficient roadmap for the importation and distribution of oil in the country has still not been arrived at, has not been counted. We really haven't struck it, I mean, hit it, hit the nail on the head. So, the Vietnam of Government will require to sit down and work out an efficient, prudent, and next season, modus operandi for ensuring that petroleum products are available all over the country. Okay, uh, the punch and the nation carried the story about uh, from Ondo State how the uh, governor has finally handed over to the deputy governor. Uh, he has proceeded now on a medical leave that will last for 21 days, hopefully. Uh, but before now, uh, his illness or his health uh, generally was shrouded in secrecy, uh, whether he was ill or not, or whether he was dead or not, and now we know that he was definitely ill, and how, how bad it was or it is, we do not know, but he has been flown out. Now, um, uh, what is your take on the, the back and forth uh, that was going on in Ondo State uh, before well, now? Is a woman named like any of us. He is the father. He is a non And some persons are uh, husband and relations. So if he's sick, he should bother for one or all of us. So we sympathize with him. And then we are worried for him. Just like we worry ourselves. Nobody prays to be sick. Nobody wants to die, or it is inevitable. And in the course of our lifetime, we will get to be sick one, at one time or the other. And as sooner than later, all human beings will take the sort of cemetery. So to that extent, he has my sympathy, and I pray for him that he recovers his health, pay healthy fan, and come back to his duty post in London State. Yeah, my, my uh, question my question now is uh, can you hear me Tunde? Yes, I'm hearing my, you. my question now is that why is it that Nigerian leaders always find it difficult to say or to accept that they are ill? We've seen in presidents, we've seen in governors, we've seen in people who are leading us not accepting the fact that they're ill and they need medical attention. Is there something in the law? Uh, that establishes that office? Is there something that we are missing that will make them to think that they're supposed to be superhuman and are not supposed to be ill? We saw in Yaradua, even when he died, we, we were not having the information he has died. We saw in uh, Buhari, you know, when he is ill, they will tell us that he has gone for a meeting that never existed and all those kind of things. Now, even our president, uh, when people say he is ill, it is not. It is not unusual for a, for someone, even at his age, to be ill all the time. But why do they keep hiding it? Is there something in the law that we need to know? <laughs> That's a very beautiful question. Let me say it uh, right away. Now look at the constitution. And all the current laws of the land is be recognized, and the no provision. That leader, as long as you are there, might be sick and they might die. And that is why you have provisions for things like sick leave. 
and then uh, or somebody to deputize or to act for the society party governor who is the president and what are them. But you see, like you said, here in Nigeria, when people are in certain offices, they have to carry their deputies and law. The deputy is very UN. They treat him like a, a, a spare tire. What the reason is they need for them to go on vacation or to go on sick leave and what at home, they become apprehensive. They never want to hand over to their deputy. Who they have not been carrying along right from day one. Furthermore, you and I will know that all those offices are so guilty. It's, uh, you are playing God when you are a governor. You are playing God when you are president. So to not hand over that office to somebody and for him to be able to know and see what you've been doing without him, they are never comfortable with it. The third one is that uh, in this part of the world, we are scared of our next door neighbor. We think that uh, if we hand over to them, when we begin to, to do some video or do some other thing, that to make it impossible for us to be able to return to those offices. And you know, sometimes those things are possible. Even though they are very difficult to prove for scientific evidence. I remember during the Second Republic in the United States, when one commissioner was appointed, uh, when one commissioner was removed and, removed and replaced by somebody else, the person that was removed voted that he would see how the newly appointed person is going to occupy that office and function in that office. They will not believe it that the very day the newly appointed commissioner is in that office, he collapsed and died in that place. I also remember somewhere around me was there, somebody was appointed as the director of the higher institution. The very first day too, he resumed in that office, he collapsed and died. And the person I met the say that both said that it was only said for me that that person was going to occupy the office of the rector. So these are some of the divisive things that we see in some of these offices that make it very uncomfortable for them to be able to hand over to somebody else. And don't also forget, uh, just like you have ever have, uh, have, uh, said, uh, we don't behave uh, most times like civilized people. We are Bohemian. We pray God. We think we cannot be sick. We think we cannot die. And so because of that, uh, we don't plan for tomorrow. Okay. And it's not just in the area of politics or in the arena of politics. It's also caught across our private life. The other will not want the wife to know uh, what assets and the abilities they have. The husband and wife will not carry their children along in their businesses because they don't want them to know the implications of their businesses. So when they are sick or when they die, the businesses die with them. Okay. So it's a third world or a, a Nigerian mentality okay. which you need to educate. Not just the people in the arena of politics, but also in private life and businesses. That they should also make a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. That they should also have a succession plan or a replacement plan or an active plan in whatever offices that we find ourselves. All right. The yeah, other question you ask why people don't want them to know about their ailment? Two, three things in that area, too. One, we have seen situations in this country before when we somebody is sick or somebody is dying, and certain persons will begin to stimulate. We need to celebrate, which is not right at all. Tunde, we really have to go. Not right. We really have to go. All that more, people's health issues are not supposed to be supported in the public domain without their consent. But as an officer, in the public arena, 
when you have issues, you get the fighting, you get the, the people who are ruling, you get the political party. Okay, okay. When you are not okay, enough to say, I have this uh, element, it could be a problem that you could have. Okay, Mr. Tunde. It is not the end of life. Yeah, Tunde Kolaole. Thank you so much. This is a good place to leave it. Thank you so much for your time and insight we'll on off the press of time, today. Yeah. Time will not permit us to go further. Thank you so much for being there. Um, yeah, uh, we, our hearts go to the people who drowned in Kwara State, 103 of them Very that drowned sad story uh, because there. of Very both mishap. And I can almost say confidently that um, if not all of them, at least 90% of them didn't have life jackets. Jacket. And uh, the kind of accidents that happen and the kind of needless deaths, deaths that we, oh. we face should never be, uh, we should not keep saying it is not our portion, like we say in Nigeria, we should do the needful and take, be cautious about it. May they rest in peace. I hope this will now create more awareness mm -hmm. in the state and every other state in the country. Let them pay attention to safety, mm -hmm. safety. Uh, we'll be right back yeah. with our very first hot topic. Do stay with us.